All right, we made it through hyponatremia. Hypernatremia is easier. Let's do this one. So this is a sodium more than 145. Our symptoms are lethargy, irritability. Remember the high-pitched cry? If they ever give you a, a question about a baby who's got doughy skin and a high-pitched cry, you think hypernatremia. The common feature here to hypernatremic conditions are that the patient either has impaired thirst mechanism or they can't get to the water. All right, so these are your disabled kids who are G-tube fed who can't ask for water. Uh, these are the elderly, these are young infants, okay? So this occurs because of water and salt losses, uh, and the causes are listed here. Many times it's GI losses, right? It's gastroenteritis. Um, it can occur because of pure water loss in diabetes insipidus, which I'll tell you about. And very rarely it happens because of gain of sodium. You can get hypernatremic from too much sodium um, in these conditions, even child abuse and salt poisoning. Child abuse is very sad, but that, that can occur. But really I want you to think about losing water or water with a little bit of salt as your cause of hypernatremia and inability to get to the water. Okay, so diabetes insipidus, what's this? This is like the reverse of SIADH. So lack of ADH effect leads to polyuria, polydipsia, very dilute watery urine, and ongoing water loss. Um, there are two forms, central and nephrogenic DI, right? Central means we're not making enough of the ADH to send to the kidney to do its thing. This can happen with head trauma. You may see it in the ICU setting, uh, brain tumors, surgery. And nephrogenic DI means you, you're making plenty of ADH, but the kidney can't respond to it for some reason. And this comes in an inherited form, congenital nephrogenic DI. This is usually X-linked, right? And it can be acquired by patients taking lithium, that's a big one, uh, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, acute kidney injury, okay? But the one we're usually wondering about is uh, congenital nephrogenic DI. So in this case, your urine osmolarity is lower than your plasma osmolarity, right? Your plasma osmolarity is high. You would think your urine osm would be high from ADH trying to fix that. Um, if it can't do that, then you think about diabetes insipidus. One, we can't tell which form it is from that, but you would think about it. And our test to figure out DI is a rough test called a water restriction test. Hospitalize a patient, have them sit there and not have any water and see what happens to their labs and their urine output and their weight. Um, so it's a, it's a rough test to have, but it distinguishes central versus nephrogenic. Okay, so key points in treating patients with hypernatremia. Again, it's usually a water problem. Slow correction is important, about the same rate as correction of hyponatremia. Um, you, you do half the water deficit and all of the sodium deficit in 24 hours, and then replace the remaining deficit over the next 24 hours. There's a calculation for free water deficit um, that you could use to figure out how much water you need to do to give back to someone. Here's a quick and easy way. Um, and our main concern to correcting hypernatremia too quickly is not cell shrinkage, it's cerebral edema, right? Because water shifts can shift into uh, the cells of the brain.